Hey guys, it's Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Now it's been a while since I posted a video and uh, kind of my stupidity, uh, not paying attention, is the reason why. I had two, vil two video series films ready to go. They were on the SD card. I went to put them on my computer. Got busy doing something else. Got distracted. Put the wrong SD card back in the camera. Hit reformat and deleted all the videos that I did not upload to my computer. So, those videos are gone forever, but I've got some other projects that I'm working on right now. Uh, this video is going to be a headset pin uh, build. The customer is one of the local SWAT teams here. they got some new headsets, and they don't quite work with their old mount system. So they asked me if I could rebuild or make some pins that will work between the two. Uh, I guess the manufacturer does not make the pins available for sale, so unless they want to spend the $180 for the whole setup when they only need one little part, they can't get the pins. So let me pull the camera around and show you what the, uh, the little hand scratch, uh, chicken scratch drawing looks like, and we'll get to work on it. All right, so here's the, uh, the drawing. We've got, they're real short, short little pins. They're just under a half an inch long. Um, the width is 0 0.4321. <clears throat> and it's just got the, the two critical measurements here are this length and then the, the position of this little groove. And this groove runs all the way through. When these push into the headset, there's a little C-clip that engages on this little bit of a uh, undercut here. So I've got some uh, decent steel, uh, some drill rod left over from another project I'm going to be making these out of. I've got 10 of them to make, so I'm going to try to get a uh, rhythm going and get all 10 of them done. And then I'm going to uh, sandblast them and blacken them with the uh, Oxfo bluing system, which seems to work really, really well for me. Um, really liking the the looks of it when you apply it to a polished piece of steel it turns it blue like blue steel of a firearm but when you sandblast it first it turns it black almost perfectly like a black oxide finish so that's what we're going to do i'm going to get the part set up and move the camera over to the lathe and we'll get going on this project all right so i'm getting ready to face this part off here um, you can see the drill rod's pretty rusted up, but the uh, parts that I'm making are smaller than this, so it should clean up just fine. Also, I have a new microphone, um, so you you guys have to tell me if this is better or worse or what for the uh, audio quality, since I know that's been one of the bigger complaints on my channel is getting decent audio. So let's, uh, yeah, that looks good. Let's try this. really irritating about these inserts is they do not make leave nice finishes on light cuts so I think what I'm gonna do is switch over to some high-speed steel here of course have everything in the way um, actually you not know I'm going to pause the video for a second and go grind a new high speed steel bit up so that I have a straight 90 here to be able to cut that corner. Alright so I sharpened up a new high speed bit here. It already had kind of a funky shape here so I just rounded this edge out um, so that it would be angled, uh, the back end of the tool angled away. 
so that I can come up into the shoulder when I make that cut in and then feed it out and it'll be right dead on. So what I'm going to do first here is face it again. leaves a much nicer surface finish on there too. Alright, I think I'm going to have to turn this light on here. It looks like it's kind of blowing it out, but I can't see without it very well right now. So let's zero our Y. And then we'll come in and make another thin pass on the outside diameter. Toyo micrometer in here. And I think we already went too short or too small on the diameter there. Oh, wait, no. We need it to go to 0.4321, and we're at 487. So yeah, we're at 0.487, and we need to go to 43.21. Get my calculator out here. Okay, so we got to take 55 thousandths of my cutting fluid. This is what happens when I clean up my shop. I forget where everything, where I put everything at.
432.4 and we wanted 432.1 is what the other part mic'd out at so I'd say we are uh, good enough all right our next dimension here is going to be taking it down to 272 thousandths diameter and that's going to go in 415 thousandths Even if that didn't hit it, it's going to be the end, the final cut on here because 272.5. So that's right dead on. And then I came in and cut the shoulder to length. Um, and I don't think that this small of a radius on this tool is going to affect the. Uh, corner here. I think it's fine just the way it is. So I'm going to put a couple really light chamfers here. Which my camera's right in the way of the tool post. Let me move the camera here. any better. There we go. Alright, so that's it for this part now I have to grind up a tool bit to cut a 35 thousandth groove into this so I will be back once I grind the tool up for it all right I just put a tiny little bit of a back rake in there so I need to come up just a hair and we'll see how she goes. camera moved here the only thing I can measure this groove with is my calipers let's get the 
calipers in here and see what it measures at. So we're at 255. We need 252. give it a little bit more. this time. Two fifty. Okay. I can't twist them up to show you and every time I pull them out it drops, but it's I think close enough. So that's basically the part minus I just got to cut the part off and chamfer the edge. Uh, my battery is about to die so I'm going to switch out my batteries and then I'll get to that final operation. I've got my parting blade in here. Come up to the front of the part here. Now this length of the, the overall length of the part is not critical really by any means. So the only critical measurements is this groove here, the diameter, and the distance from here to here. So that's zeroed off to the front edge here, and this is going to be 0.4934 right past it it out or not. Yeah. I think that'll work there. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it part way through, switch out to a chamfering tool so I can put this back chamfer on here and then I'll part it the rest of the way. I was hoping it would break off on the other side, but I think that's our part. Just need to uh, test it, make sure it fits, and then make nine more. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this one out by itself. Um, have the deputy from the SWAT team come over and test it and make sure it fits before I make all the rest of them. That way I know that my measurements are good and I can just repeat it over and over and over until it's done. All right, <clears throat> here's the uh, finished part. I hope it's not, I hope it's in focus. I, I can't really tell on the screen here on the GoPro, 
but I got it blackened using the uh, Brownells Oxo Blue, um, which leaves an almost perfect black oxide look. Um, all I do is sandblast the part first, and I don't know why, but that makes it turn completely black like this. And the finish has been pretty uh, durable. Um, I've coated a, a few muzzle brakes like this for some AR-15s and shot the crap out of them and they still look black. They don't fade like the normal chemical bluing does on polished steel. So now I just have to wait until Monday, today's Friday. Um, I have to wait until Monday to test fit it to make sure that everything works. Um, I'm somewhat worried that this shoulder here is going to be too stiff. I think it might need to be broke just a little bit um, to remove the part, but we'll see on Monday how it fits. I think that's going to be the end of it for this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, please like and comment and uh, subscribe for more.